Hi everyone, I'm Pav Bryan, and today I'm going to be discussing how you should be properly fueling for your Grand Fondo or sportive type event. So this is really important, um, hugely important, and you know a lot of people really get this wrong. Um, it's and there's so many reasons why, but you know, ultimately, what we're going to do is give you the, the foundation knowledge uh, to, to be able to, you know, actually put a plan in place, like a fueling plan. So, hopefully, you're not watching this, you know, the day before. You want to be watching this months before, so you can develop a plan. But you know, even if you, you know, you don't have time to develop this nutrition plan, you're going to have enough. There'll be enough uh, information within this uh, video. Um, for you know for you to be able to take away and you know get value from so uh, first of all uh, make sure if you are uh, if you are watching on my YouTube channel everything that I'm going to refer to all of the external blogs and resources are going to be in there in the um, description uh, and if you're watching on my website uh, everything's going to be within that blog so if you do need to see other, other resources blogs or, or whatever you can find it all there Okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about you know the amount of uh, you know energy that you can intake into your body or ingest, eat uh, per hour, and you know typically um, for a long time we believed that to be you know ninety grams maximum, and you know. Uh, and that really depends on where, what types of uh, carbohydrate you're uh, getting that from. So, you know, 90 grams, but it'll be 60 grams from, you know, your typical glucose, maltodextrin sort of area, uh, and 30, uh, 30 grams from, you know, fructose. Uh, fructose, obviously, from fruit, um, although it's not, uh, not all of your fruit is 100% fructose. I think it's usually a 50-50 split between, um, you know, glucose uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and fructose. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then, you know, everything else. Uh, pretty much comes under uh, your, your sort of uh, other area so um, you want to be, make sure you're getting a split and that's where it can get really complicated and you know sports manufacturing products can be really useful around this um, but we're going to talk about that a bit more depth um, you know but ultimately first of all there's some, there's some new science or really reasonably new science that was done in uh, ultra distance and, and multi-day um, multi uh, athletes uh, that suggests that actually if you give enough time to adapt in your gut you can push that uh, the amount from 90 grams to 120 grams an hour so if you actually start to work out you know how much you can intake uh, in calories we're not really like to talk about calories but we can we can look at it like that because it's easier to to see you know uh, 60 60 grams is uh, of carbohydrates would give you 240 uh, calories um, you know 120 is going to give you you know 480 calories um, so you know you're getting uh, a, a quite a good amount of, of intake there now depends on the amount of effort you're doing you're probably still expending more than you know your 480 calories per hour um, but ultimately that's why you do the training because your body's going to have some stores already glycogen stored around your body and your liver and muscles already um, you know and you're also uh, you're also going to be burning some fat as you go um, so you ultimately, when you really look at this, if you can get at least 90, even, even if you do manage to get 60 grams of carbohydrates in an hour, you know, you are going to give yourself a huge boost. You, you don't have enough uh, glycogen stored in your body to be able to do this without eating. Um, and ultimately, most people do eat, but they tend to either leave it a bit too late or they don't eat enough. When you actually look at how much food 90 grams of carbohydrates is, it's massive, you know. You're talking like at probably four, uh, four gels. If you're going to eat gels an hour, you know, it's at least two bars. So if you once you start to think about that quantity of food, you can start to see that actually, if you do leave it until your event day, you're probably not going to be able to eat that much, and that's simply because you're going to feel too full. Uh, your gut isn't like used to being digesting that amount of uh, food anyway. So you know you might get some GI distress. And, you know, and you might just feel too full to eat. You know, and ultimately, what we want to do is we want to give your body enough time to adapt to that, so your blood, your body isn't sending all of your blood to your uh, uh, to your stomach when it should be going to digest the food that you're eating, when it should be going to your legs to be able to, you know, pedal. Um, so that's the number one takeaway, and we're going to discuss that again later on in this video. Is that actually you want to develop a nutritional plan as far out as possible. 
forgetting you know day-to-day -day general eating uh, which will be covered you know in other blogs yeah, and uh, uh, videos no doubt right your first opportunity to um, to start giving your body enough fuel for this effort this you know humongous grand fondo or uh, sportive effort is going to be at your breakfast now you need to really be eating this like three hours before um, you need to test this out though some people can get it down to two hours but you know usually it's around three so if your sportive starts at like seven in the morning even earlier you probably do need to consider getting up early um, you know it's not the end of the world if you don't want to do that you're just not going to be able to you should reduce the amount that you're going to eat because you don't want to be sort of really full and then trying to pile more top up food on top of it you want to give your body enough time to digest your breakfast which is going to start to slowly drip feed uh, glycogen around your body um, which is what you're going to need as you as you get going so I'm a big fan you know always oats for me every morning you know porridge oats you know whatever and I think that that's the perfect race meal and honestly that's it's so simple for you to be able to do that you can take that anywhere if you're in a hotel you know you can blend up like a smoothie getting like you know five portions of fruit and veg in there again you know I always talk about this the more fruit and vegetables, the better. Uh, if you don't believe like, that hit me that you can get five portions of fruit and vegetable in a normal shake, it's not huge, it's a normal shake, uh, watch some of my other videos because I definitely do prove it. You know, you're gonna want some of the oats and I recommend, you know, 100 to 150 grams of oats. Uh, you might consider um, having a, a little bit of healthy fats in there, so maybe some healthy nut or seed butter. Um, and then obviously, you know, milk, whatever you fancy. I go with plant-based milk again you know it's it's really important to you know not over overdo it on uh, on some of your fats and proteins small amounts is good i don't recommend you supplementing protein you might have something at the end it really depends on you know how much you're going to eat when you actually look you know if you were to have 100 150 grams of um uh, of, uh, of oats you know with you know like a normal milk it doesn't matter what that is you know oat milk is usually quite just uh, low protein because it's typically just oats and water you know there's not actually much oats in there sometimes they're just mixing you know water around the oats until it goes a you know a milky color uh, soy milk is quite high in protein you know probably nine grams per per cup and uh, you know same with cow's milk not that i recommend dairy at all um but when you when you build this shake and you've got all that, you're probably getting forty to you know forty or grams of, of protein anyway. So you don't need to add any extra protein in that. Just focus on the carbohydrate. You know it's not going to hurt you. You know as you start to build out this nutritional uh, strategy, if you want to track it on something like My Fitness Pal, you know we're going to talk about what you should be eating in a moment. Uh, but ultimately, you're going to see that actually most normal foods, even though they've not got a protein like uh, supplement in them, you know you're going to eat enough protein, and your body knows what to do with that protein. It doesn't need to be tight your body's going to time that for you carbohydrates is the different one so you need to be carbohydrate focused um, as you as you build this strategy so okay so we're going to talk about what you're going to eat now i'm a massive fan and this really does vary it does vary quite a bit massive fan of the first 50 percent of your sportiva grand fondo long ride whatever it's going to be you know you need solid foods uh, and by that I mean, you know, you take in, if you can, you know, you know, take loads of bars with you. You don't have to use Cliff Bars. I quite like Cliff Bars. You know, there's loads of other different bars that you can use. You know, Cliff Bar don't pay me anything. I, you know, I genuinely quite like, you know, that, the ease of that. There's healthier bars. You know, if you want to make your own, you know, make your own because that's the best way to do that. And, you know, you're going to find out in a minute why I uh, why I recommend making as much as you can anyway. Um, so for the first 50 cents, don't worry about eating in the first hour, probably okay to not worry about that. And then from hour one, you're gonna start eating, you know, minimum 60, ideally 90 grams, 120 if you've adapted your gut for like at least eight to 12 weeks before the event. So, and you don't wanna go straight in with 120, start at 90 and you know, every couple of weeks, push up 10 grams or something like that. Uh, but definitely do not go into your event and try and eat 120 grams of carbohydrates if you've not done you know, any other adaptation work on that. Um, so when you're talking, like you should seriously check out the labels of some of this stuff. You are talking about quite eating quite a lot of food. So that does present a problem if you're at a grand funder or a sportive because you're probably not wanting to carry that much anyway. Um, and that's, that's absolutely fine. You might carry enough to get you to the first feed station. You can work out what time you might be there and then check what they've got 
on offer. You know, they, they might not have too many bars, they might have something like this. You know, ultimately, if you want to win it, you're going to have to stick to this nutritional plan. If you want to have fun and just enjoy it, you probably can eat, you know, whatever they have on offer. Um, you know, if you want to beat your best time, you might consider, you know, a mix of the two. You don't need to be like super focused on getting it 100%, uh, but you might want to make sure that, you know, if you can drop a bag, if you've got dietary needs, I'm sure they'll accommodate that, you know, and eat, eat right. You know, so you're gonna get 50% of the way through uh, your ride is my recommendation before you start to switch to stuff like gels, candy and sweets, you know, dry fruit, anything that is more of a uh, sugary, you know. And I really recommend this because it's really hard for you. If you to have like a gel in your warm up or something really sugary, your gut is now gonna be expecting that kind of quick release carbohydrate. Whereas a slower, you know, a slower more, um, you know, a bars and that the slower release energy, they're gonna, your body's gonna digest it a bit better. Uh, or slower sorry and uh, and you know and you're gonna end up not craving that you're not gonna have like super like sh sh sugar spikes um, which is the problem with having a gel in your warm-up you might feel epic and then you might have a little drop in energy you're gonna have to keep eating gels the whole way through and you know it's horrible you know it's horrible for your teeth your gut you know your digestive system to eat that many gels so definitely try to keep those to the last bit and then you know the the final hour or so can be you know energy drink don't worry about eating anything just get your calories from there so this is where we're gonna get really complicated or reasonably complicated and there's going to be a bit of math involved and uh, you know you're gonna to have to do some planning um that as we said that 90 grams if you're just going to go with the plain 90 grams and not worry about going trying to adapt to 120 that 90 grams has got to be 60 grams from sort of a glucose uh, amount of dextrin sort of area 30 grams from fructose uh you know if you go and look at your normal like a gel or a you know a cliff bar whatever you're going to do anything like that even buying something from the shop it doesn't tell you this information sure you could ring them and they might tell you but ultimately that's an awful lot of time to you know to get this so uh, first thing is that if you are going to do that it is going to be best guess and this is why i kind of recommend you doing like a lot of testing around it uh, like i say fructose only comes from you know plants um Whereas, you know, and it's a 50-50 split. So you, you already know that if you're going to have, you know, like a jam sandwich, you know, you've probably got your bread in there, you know, you're going to have some jam and you might have some fruit with that. So some raisins or banana or something like that. You know, you're going to build that up. Of course, it's difficult to kind of gauge this when you're out in a sportive or grand fondo. That's why you do need to plan ahead and find out what they've got on offer. Again, so here, the number one thing, again, especially if you're doing something crazy, like I know we're talking about this being for grand fondos and sportiers, but the same principle applies, applies regardless of what event you're doing. Um, obviously, if you're doing a short race, you don't need to worry too much about this. If you're doing a hill climb time trial, like we do in the UK, typically less than five minutes, you know, you don't even need to eat anything. You might even consider being slightly depleted, you know, and not having, you know, even a little bit dehydrated because your weight, the weight loss there is going to be, um, you know, a benefit, uh, more of a benefit. And you're not going to bonk on a five minute effort unless you're already considerably depleted. Um, but anyway, if you're doing something ultra and you've got to be supported doing this, yeah, seriously, like this is where like making your own comes into it because you can control everything and you can make sure that everything that you were eating is the right ratio. And if you go a little bit over, it's always a little bit better uh, or it's a bit better to be a bit over than a bit under. Um, so especially with those multi-day stuff, like you're, you're going to feel crap anyway. Like you're going to have days where, you know, your, your stomach aches anyway, your legs are going to ache, your butt aches, everything's going to ache. So, you know, have making sure you have enough energy is going to be great for your mind and body um, even if you do have you know have to use the bathroom a bit more so making your own is exactly what I'm saying here because you can add you can work out ingredients exactly where that comes from and that is available online like you can find out quite easily or you know how oats you know uh, where the ratio is from oats and if you're going to put honey and you know fruit in bars it is great and um, you know the other thing as well with your sports nutrition uh, drinks, you know, they're great. Again, they're not going to tell you if that's a mix of different places, usually a different sources of carbohydrate. Um, and they're typically quite expensive, even if you're getting like, a, you know, a powdered form rather than buying like a Gatorade or something from the from a, a gas station. Um, you, you know, if you want to get like a big bulk bag of maltodextrin and like a bag of fructose, so cheap. It's going to last you forever. Mix it up in like a, a big uh, a container and, and then, you know, dish it out like that. And that's going to be a really good way. 
obviously unless you're supported at the Grand Fondo Sportive you're not going to be able to do that um, but that's where you know check out the you know the in energy intake of whatever the sponsor is of the event you know whatever manufacturer is providing that um, you know that powder uh, and then you can work out exactly how many scoops you need to put in or whatever usually they have the package in there so you can work out you know what the energy is and you should know how much you're going to drink and time that around that whether you're going to take two bottles or you know, one's going to be energy, one's going to be just water and electrolytes and stuff like that. So that's pretty much it. It's not the the fundamental the fundamentals around it are fairly simple. It's the logistic and planning of it, which is going to take a little bit of time. And that's where you know having someone help you is going to be really important. You know, so 15 minute consultation with me is always free, and you know, uh, happy to discuss what your coaching needs, whether you need ongoing or if you want a retainer. You know, that is just a certain amount of my time every month to do whatever you feel is is valuable. So, you know, there's no there's no pressure. There's never any minimums. You know, I like to have a lot of fun with all my clients. So you know, you know, if you're on if you're on the website, you know there'll be a little link or a pop up somewhere uh, to, uh, to to have a consultation with me. If you're on my YouTube or you're watching anywhere else, you know, head to coachpath.com uh, and you know send me a, send me a little uh, email to have a chat. Um, remember, just to finish, the most important thing is that you test this out like seriously. And you know, once you've got your plan. You know, try not to deviate from it. It's really difficult, and there might be some stuff that gets you know spanner in the works. A lot of this year, I've been hearing about events running out of, you know, food and, and drink, um, you know, and that can be a real, real problem. Um, so, you know, having maybe a contingency is a great idea. Um, but that's it. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this. If you've enjoyed the video, just make sure you let me know because, you know, I love to hear from everybody and we all love like a thumbs up, right? Um, if you, so share it with your friends as well. If you're on the YouTube, subscribe. You know, if you're on my website and you want to make sure you stay in the loop, uh, fill out the form that, you know, gives me your details. I'm obviously not going to abuse it or anything. We're just going to send you some, some messages um, uh, when we drop new blogs and stuff like that. So uh, thank you again for watching. My name is Pav Brian and uh, have an awesome day.